Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Dave Morrill. I'm Director of Clinical Support for Cooper Surgical Fertility and Genomics Solutions. Um, my background is as an embryologist. I've worked in embryology since the mid-80s. Um, but I have a particular interest in uh, andrology. So I'm going to speak to you today about some of the pra practical aspects of sperm uh, preparation and selection. Um, it's possibly a good idea to refocus our interest on uh, andrology. We've tended to, tended to neglect it. But subfertility affects around about 5% uh, of men and, and up to half of the people that we see in assisted conception units will have some paternal contributory factor to their subfertility. So the idea is to refocus how we use, prepare, handle and select sperm in treatment. Now the simple purpose of a sperm is to deliver DNA to the oocyte. Uh, which sounds nice and simple. The problem we have in assisted conception laboratories is it's actually difficult to know the quality of the DNA of the sperm that actually fertilizes the egg. And we tend to use proxy markers of sperm quality in terms of the numbers, the motility, uh, and the morphology of the sperm cells. But as you may be aware, the morphology, um, although we've tended to use it quite rigorously, is not a particularly good indicator of genetic health. So the risk of aneuploidy and DNA fragmentation in the normal cells in oligoasthenoteratozoospermic men is elevated. So we need other markers so that we uh, improve the outcome in terms of fertilizing capacity, but also the post-fertilization events, including embryo de development, subsequent uh, embryo implantation. Now, one of the focuses of interest has been on DNA damage, and there are a whole range of causes of DNA damage, whether it's um, pharmaceutical, caffeine, alcohol, uh, smoking, uh, age, and the likes. Um, but there are things in the lab that we can take more control of, and one is temperature, and the other is time, time of preparation uh, and handling, and control of reactive oxygen species in the way that we handle sperm. So we're going to take a closer look inside the andrology lab and how we can limit the effects of poor sperm and hopefully improve sperm selection. Now the first really important message is that time and temperature have a, a, an impact, a negative impact on uh, DNA damage in the sperm we are using in our assisted conception labs. So the, the ideal um, situation would be that the man would uh, produce his sample, you would immediately prepare it, uh, you'd prepare it in a way that uh, reduced the number of DNA fragmented sperm, and you'd use that prepared sample immediately. Because all of the time that the sample uh, sits in the lab, either before pre preparation or after preparation, is an opportunity for DNA damage to increase and things we do in the lab can make that worse and one of the absolutely key things is keeping samples at 37 degrees which we would never uh, advise you to do. So we want um, to ideally not leave samples uh, unprepared for any more than 30 minutes so between the time of ejaculation and the start of preparation we would advise is as soon as possible but no more than 30 minutes. And when you've prepared the sperm you should keep them at room temperature because at 37 degrees the spontaneous DNA fragmentation is increased and of course that compromises DNA integrity further. Now sperm preparation in, in principle is really simple. You just collect an enriched population of morphologically normal motile sperm and you deselect the immotile, the morphologically abnormal uh, dead sperm and you free it of seminal plasma which of course is critical. So you um, pretty much whichever preparation method you use comparing DNA fragmentation index in unprocessed semen with uh, processed, whether it's a density gradient or a swim up, you will get a significant reduction in DNA damaged sperm. 
And of course, in, in preparing the sperm, you get rid of all the, the ugly ones that we think won't fertilize eggs. Now, you'll know as well as me that there, there, there are a number of more advanced preparation methods, but we still primarily rely on a wash and concentration, which is bad news for the sperm because you risk more exposure to reactive oxygen species. Um, you might use a swim up, which selects sperm based on motility. That does deselect DNA damaged sperm, but it's only best for ejaculates with good sperm counts and motility. Or you can use a density gradient, which as the name suggests, selects sperm by their density. So a more mature sperm is more dense and will collect more readily at the, end, at the bottom of the gradient. That tends to give a high uh, yield of motile sperm. But there are things that we can do in the lab to um, think about how we prepare and what sort of medium we use. So we know reactive oxygen species can be produced uh, during preparation through centrifugation. So, for example, we would always advocate that you split samples into uh, multiple gradients rather than spinning harder or longer. And if you have a centrifuge with a soft start stop function, that's designed to limit heat generation, which might also contribute to uh, sperm DNA damage. Now, the, the other important part is the medium and the gradients that you use for your sperm preparation. And, and the, the sperm preparation medium we use has to uh, support a number of functions, particularly uh, the ability to go through capacitation and the acrosome reaction. And the gradients, we want to separate the viable motile sperm from, from the junk, to put it bluntly. And we want that fraction of motile, morphologically normal uh, sperm with good DNA integrity. And in the washing medium, we want um, a composition that provides energy substrates, uh, but will also potentially support hyperactivation and capacitation, whilst protecting against oxidative damage from ROS. So a good medium um, needs to do all of those tasks and uh, a combination of things can contribute to that. So um, in allowing sperm to prepare for the acrosome reaction, supporting the uh, change in the membranes, uh, albumin and bicarbonate are particularly important. And for providing um, the environment which allows intracellular calcium to increase, which will allow um, for hyperactivated motility, which is important. You need bicarbonate again, and you need an alkaline pH. And by alkaline, as you'll see, we mean significantly al alkaline, not the 7.3 that you might typically use for our sites. So this is the Origio um, Andrology series, which takes all of these things into account. I just wanted to highlight a couple of things that we think are important. Now, if you've scanned the slide already, the first thing you'll see is the pH. And the pH is significantly alkaline at 8 to 8.5. Now, that's important to point out because that is the pH that will give you optimized sperm function and motility. It isn't ideal to put that together with the oocyte, so there needs to be a little bit of an interim step. But that pH absolutely will drive best sperm function. The other thing is, I mentioned albumin as being important. In the sperm wash, it's double the albumin that we have in typical uh, culture media, which is five milligrams per mil. In the sperm wash, that's doubled. Um, it's HEPs buffered. And this is an important extra point. The HEPs is there to control the pH. The bicarbonate is there to support sperm function. It is not a buffering agent in this um, particular product. We've talked about reactive oxygen species and the media contain a number of, of components that have uh, oxidative protective uh, properties, citrate, taurine, and DTA. And again, if you're particularly observant, what you'll also notice is that the gradients uh, have differing osmolalities. And that's because semen is generally higher osmolality than the, spur, the, the, the uh, culture media we would use for oocytes and embryos. So what this allows us to do is set up a gradient 
that the sperm travel through during density gradient centrifugation and they go through an osmolarity gradient as well as a density gradient which protects against osmotic damage. So the, the antioxidants I've mentioned, so this is important for limiting DNA damage. Um, prepared sperm are more prone to oxidative stress than those in seminal plasma. So it's more important post-preparation. And as I say, we have EDTA, taurine, citrate, and albumin itself as reactive oxygen species uh, protection. It's, a, it's an ox oxidative stress reliever, if you like. So those will appear in our, our media. What about sperm selection? For RUI and IVF, you'll create the population and put them with the egg, and hopefully the fittest ones uh, will um, fertilize the egg. What about sperm selection for ICSI, where the guys in the lab will pick the one sperm? Now, as I've already said, the morphologically normal sperm from typical ICSI patients, the oligoasthenoteratozoospermic men, have a higher risk of DNA damage and, and aneuploidy. So if you're picking a normal sperm from these patients, you might pick a good one, the green ones that are good DNA integrity, or you might pick a poor one that looks normal, but is actually carrying, carrying DNA fragmentation. And if you do that, it has an impact on your fertilization rate, your uh, conversion from cleavage to blastocyst, implantation and, and miscarriage rates. So selecting the individual sperm goes one step further. The sperm preparation allows a selection of a, a population, but for ICSI we want to select the individual sperm. And that's where the hyaluronin-based technologies come in with Sperm Slow and Pixie. And these um, uh, simply allow you to choose one sperm they will deselect DNA damaged sperm before you put it into the oocyte. And this is a, 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 a paper demonstrating that it reduces miscarriage rate. So you're selecting the sperm that goes into the egg, but the real impact is way, way beyond fertilization and post implantation. So um, coming back to where I started, I think a refocus on uh, optimizing the way we do andrology and select sperm is important. It's good to go through the procedures with a fine tooth comb and make sure they are truly optimized in the way we handle, prepare and store samples before, during and after preparation. We need to use media that are optimized but protect against reactive, reactive oxygen species. And it's worth considering advanced sperm selection procedures when we're selecting individual sperm uh, for ICSI in particular. <clears throat>